I Love Hottie by Nicole Capito. Do you remember what life was like before you had a phone? Well, I do. Let me take you back to 2010. It is just another gloomy September day in North Huntington, Pennsylvania. Dress head to toe in sparkly and fluorescent apparel. I sat in my assigned seat of my fifth grade classroom, surrounded by a table of my best friends, Taylor, Megan, and Ashley. It was extremely difficult to keep my attention on the teacher, Mr. Miller. The whole period he went on and on about the Boston Tea Party and how it was not an actual tea party, which to my 10 year old year old self was not relevant. Mr. Miller was a very strict teacher who did not tolerate any form of talking or fun in his classroom. Being that this was a time before phones, the only way around his rules was to pass notes. Every day we would exchange notes, transferring them among the four of us as we wrote about a variety of topics from the, from the drama in the classroom to describing our crushes in detail. Our topic on this particular day, the earthquake in Haiti. The note started and ended with the same phrase, in which I wrote, I love Haiti. As I went to give the note to Megan, she dropped it, and of course all eyes, as well as Mr. Miller's, was on the crinkled up note laying on the floor. Irritated, he quickly walked over, picked up the note, and read it aloud with a mocking tone. As he said, I love Hottie. We were so young, our handwriting was not exactly legible, but he was the one that felt it was necessary to read it out loud. We all began laughing hysterically at his misconception of our note as we corrected him on what the note actually said, but he did not find the situation as comical. From that day forward, we were split up from one another, and not only was talking prohibited, but so was passing notes. Although we could not pass notes in that history class, we still managed to keep the tradition going in English, math, and music class. Although Mr. Miller was upset because we were passing notes in his class, I now know that he was not telling us to never write notes, but to simply pay attention when he was speaking. His attempt to embarrass us by reading the note aloud backfired when he misinterpreted my handwriting. After this experience, I feel as though the expression of written communication provides a form of literacy that is more personal and intimate than the use of technology. Being that I wrote that note to my friends, we were able to understand its message due to the familiarity of handwriting and conversation among us three, whereas outsiders would not fully understand. In conclusion, it is my hope that after listening to my story, you set aside the phones and make written communication a more prevalent role in your life.